Last class, we were discussing variance and covariance. So, the covariance of two random variables is defined as expectation of x y minus expectation of x times expectation of y uh, whenever it is well defined. Okay. And we said that the random variables x and y are said to be uncorrelated if covariance of x y equal to 0. Okay. Uh, and we were in the middle of proving a theorem saying which says that if x and y are independent then they are necessarily uncorrelated. Okay. But the converse of, of course is not true we gave an example uncorrelated random variables may be dependent they need not be independent. Okay. So, I will state that uh, the theorem uh, I think I did not state it in uh, very precisely. So, I will state the theorem more precisely today. So, you take this statement rather than the previous one. And I was in the middle of the proof, but let me state the theorem properly. If x and y are independent random variables with expected absolute x less than infinity and expected absolute y is an infinity then expected x y exists and covariance of x y equal to 0. Okay. So, this is the statement of I did not I stated it in plain English I think yesterday right. So, this is the proper statement. So, all you need here is expectation of absolute x and expectation of absolute y being finite. Okay. Then in that case you are guaranteed that expected x y exists and in particular expected x y will be equal to expectation of x times expectation of y. Okay. So, <coughs> so it is generally not the case that if x and y have uh, well defined so in the sense finite expected value it is generally not the case that expected x y is well defined okay but if they are independent it's automatically well defined okay and in fact they are uncorrelated okay so this is the statement proof we we started out saying proof we did it for a simple case right if x and y are simple we we wrote uh, so we had this kind of a representation right a i i a i oh i big a i and y is equal to sum over i j equals 1 through m b j i b j right then we wrote out x y as the double sum a i b j indicator a i intersection b j and then we argued that a i and b j are independent for all i and j right that was because x and y are independent random variables and then we were able to prove that x and y are in fact uncorrelated. Okay. Now, we have to so now we have to extend it for any non negative measurable random any non negative random variables right. So, this is previous class
So, this was done. So, next suppose x and y are non negative. Now, what do I do? Consider a approximating sequence, right. So, consider let x n and y n be simple uh, the sequences of simple okay sequences of sequences of simple random variables such that x n increases to x and y n increases to y okay such an such an approximation always exists we know that right we can explicitly find such a approximation from below so i'm obviously heading towards an application of the monotone convergence theorem right so obviously then xn yn increases to xy agreed they are all non negative and increasing right so x n y n is also increasing and it approaches x y correct ok. We have expectation of x y we have expectation of x y is equal to limit n tending to infinity expectation of x n y n y m c t, but x n and y n are so, so ok. So, wait so x n and y x n y n uh, so the way you can t do it is x n and y n in your approximation right are independent also right because in if you just specifically take the the you remember the how we constructed if you had given any measurable function non negative measurable, measurable function g the way you construct g n the approximating sequence you can show that x n and y n are also uh, the, the approximating sequence are also independent of each other all right. since x n and y n are independent by construction right this is what I mean right. So, with the way we constructed the approximating sequence you can you can verify that they are in fact x n and y n are in fact independent ok. expectation of x y equal to. So, this will be limit n tending to infinity. So, you know that for simple random variables you have shown that independent random variables are uncorrelated previous lecture right. So, this will become expectation of x n times expectation of y n correct. Now, so this limit, so this limit can be. This is obviously limit uh, expectation of x n time, limit expectation of y n, because both the limits exist. Right? Why do both the limit exist? From? Well, it's actually because of MCT. Right? So, again by so you apply M M C T. So, this is limit this times limit that right. So, the limit of a product is the product of the limits if when all whenever all limits exist, but here all limits do exist right. So, that will be equal to. So, this is by M C T again this will be expectation of x times expectation of y.
okay any questions so you proved it for non negative random variables so i have not assumed here so if you notice i have proved this is a very general proof right i have not assumed that x uh, x is discrete or y is continuous or any such thing right i have not assumed joint densities i have not assumed pmfs right it could be a very any general random variable x and y whenever they are independent they are uncorrelated well i have proved it for the non negative case when x and y are both non negative if i have to deal with random variables that are possibly negative then i have to use x plus x minus right uh, more generally we write x is equal to x plus minus x minus y is equal to y plus minus y minus and complete the proof this is there in your lecture notes okay so i am not writing that down you explicitly compute uh, it write x as x plus minus x minus y plus as y plus minus y minus expand the whole thing out and then you can prove that so when x and y are independent x plus and y plus x plus and y minus they will all be independent right you have to uh, that that you can show easily right because in fact that's a question in your uh, quiz right after all what is x plus x plus is max of x comma 0 suppose you want to show that x plus and y minus are independent y minus is minus min of y comma 0 right they are both functions of x and y so they must be independent right so th all these guys will turn out to be independent x plus y plus x plus y minus x minus y plus x minus y minus right and then invoke this for non negative random variables and you can get it okay just write out the whole write out this product and you will get it okay you have to that's where you have to invoke this okay if this were not true then you may have some infinity minus infinity problems okay okay any questions so so i have i'm next going to talk about uh, the variance of sum of two random variables right so we know that so if you have x and y are any random variables not necessarily independent or uncorrelated or any such thing we know that expectation is always linear right expected x plus y is is always equal to expectation of x plus expectation of y that's just linearity of integrals right but the variance is not necessarily always uh, you cannot always say that the variance of a sum of two random variables is sum of variances right that's not true okay so i will just uh, state a proposition it says if x and y are random variables then sigma x plus y squared is equal to sigma x squared plus sigma y squared plus twice covariance of x comma y okay so if you are interested in computing the variance of a sum of two random variables then you have to sum the two variances and add twice the covariance okay but if x and y are uncorrelated you can just add the two variances or if x and y are in particular independent you can add the variances and say that is the variance of the sum okay similarly for n random variables how do you think this will this will uh, generalize 
if you had sum of n random variables you will first all sum all the variances plus you will have all the possible covariate twice all these co covariances a covariance x i j for all i less than j right you have to sum sum it like that okay so it generalizes in a straightforward manner okay so this proving this is very easy right you can just write out uh, so what is this this is after all expectation of uh, so this is expectation of x plus y squared minus uh, yeah so let me do it like this minus expectation of the well, expectation of x plus y the whole squared right great now this is equal to this so this is equal to that that is equal to you can just expand this guy out right so expectation of x squared plus y squared plus 2 x y uh, minus expectation of uh, x squared minus expectation of y squared well so what I mean here is expectation of x plus y the whole square okay. So this is just expectation of x plus expectation of y okay. Uh, so the, then I will get minus 2 expectation of x expectation of y right. So then I have what I want right so this and that will combine to give you variance of x that and that will give you variance of y. So pl plus 2 expected x y minus 2 expected x times expected y right. So this is this will be equal to that right. If x and y were uncorrelated you will have this term will cancel with that term. So you will have just the sum of the variances okay. So that is just a minor point. So generally if you are given independent random variables or uncorrelated random variables you can add the variances and say that is the variance of the sum but generally you cannot do that okay you have to have all these covariance terms. Okay. So, if covariance of x y is something positive the variance will only be greater right, but if it is a negative correlation the variance will actually be less than the sum of the variances okay variance of the sum will be less than the sum of the variances if they are negatively correlated okay. so that is just a minor thing right. I want to make another definition. The correlation coefficient between x and y between x and y or y and x it is all the same is defined as rho x comma y is equal to covariance of x comma y divided by sigma x sigma y okay these are the standard deviations the square root of the variances or you can take it as covariance of x y by square root of variance x square root of variance y okay. So this is called correlation coefficient between x and y. So in some sense this is a scaled scaled version of the covariance okay. So it is like saying so if x and so this is somewhat scale invariant so if x and y you are measuring x and y in uh, let us say kilograms as opposed to grams right you will get different answers for the covariance but rho x y will be the same okay no matter what units you measure x and y in okay it is like a scale free thing 
uh, the most important thing about this rho xy again rho xy can be positive or negative right. So, these guys are always the denominator is always uh, is, is always uh, positive of course, assuming all this is not 0 right this is not defined when the standard deviation is 0, but if the standard deviation is 0 then the variables are themselves the random variables are themselves constant right. So, except in that case this is well defined and this is positive and covariance could be positive or negative right. So, rho x y could also be positive or negative it can in fact be 0 also right. So, the important result about this co correlation coefficient is it is a number that lies between minus 1 and 1 always ok. So, in that sense it is a uh, scale down it is a very it is a nice way to represent the covariance uh, the correlation between x and y ok because it is a it is a kind of scale free kind of a thing. Theorem this is Cauchy Schwartz inequality. for any two random variables x and y minus 1 is less than or equal to rho x y is less than or equal to 1. Further So, this is so the this is saying that the correlation coefficient lies between minus 1 and plus 1 both inclusive. Furthermore, we can in fact say that whenever the correlation coefficient equals plus 1 or correlation coefficient equals minus 1 there is a deterministic relationship between x and y ok. Further if rho x comma y equals 1 then there exists a greater than 0 such that so there exists some real number a greater than 0 such that a y minus expectation of y is equal to a times x minus expectation of x almost surely. and if rho x y equal to minus 1 then there exists a less than 0 such that all that So, is the theorem clear? So, this is saying that correlation coefficient is between minus 1 and 1, but whenever it is equal to 1 then y can always be written as some a x plus b for some constants right. You can think of just uh, this as a x plus some other constant and similarly if rho is minus 1 then y is equal to a x plus b where a is negative. So, there is a deterministic relationship between x and y whenever the correlation coefficient is plus 1 or minus 1. So, when that is not case uh, that is not the case they it will be strictly between 0 and 1 ok. This is so, this is called Cauchy Schwarz inequality so, another way of saying that is uh, absolute covariance of x y is less than or equal to sigma x times sigma y right the another way of saying the Cauchy Schwarz inequality is to say that absolute rho x y is less than or equal to 1 in other words absolute covariance is less than or equal to sigma x times sigma y right. Uh, proof. 
So, this Koshish was it has a very uh, it has a very short proof, but you have to know it ok there is it is a little bit difficult to I mean you have to know how to proceed with it because I mean I am just going to copy what I have here ok. So, you have to do the it comes in two steps, but you have to know how to do it ok. Let x tilde equal to x minus e x and y tilde. So, it is easier to work with the centered versions of these random variables right I am just taking away the mean. So, that these guys are 0 in expectation 0 mean random variables and all this is a little bit easier because then you will have y tilde equal to a times x tilde and so on right. So, with 0 mean random variables all this is very easy. Let blah 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 y tilde equal to y minus e y. Now, I want to show consider this ok this is what you have to start with. So, with this definition expected x tilde squared will be variance of x and similarly expected x tilde y tilde will be covariance of x y ok. So, you consider expectation of this big expression expectation of x tilde minus expectation of x tilde y tilde over expectation of y tilde squared times y tilde this whole square ok. So, I mean so this is actually just a constant this whole thing is just a constant right and in fact what is this. So, this is like covariance over sigma y squared is not it. So, I am just considering this. So, I am essentially considering x tilde minus some constant times y tilde ok and I am considering the squared expectation of that. Now, this is certainly non negative why because what is inside is a non negative random variable. So, this is certainly non negative. Now, it turns out that if you expand this out you get Cauchy Schwarz inequality ok. So, let us expand this out. Uh, well, let us see. So, this is so this will be like expectation of so does this work out? So, it will give you expectation of x tilde squared uh, so if you do do this you will get it. So, okay, so it is a big big messy operation. So, you will have this squared uh, times expectation of y tilde squared right. So, should we just do this quickly x tilde squared plus expectation of so uh, this will square is not it this will square. So, I will get expectation of x tilde y tilde squared over expectation of y tilde squared. I will have a expectation of y tilde squared the whole squared, but then that will cancel with expectation of y tilde squared coming from here right. I am taking x square plus y square minus 2 x uh, 2 a b if you like right. So, then I will have a minus 2 a b term that is minus 2 x tilde uh, well ok. So, I made a mistake here right. So, finally, I yeah I think if I do that so far I am ok I think right. So, then I will put an expectation here minus 2 expectation of uh, x tilde y tilde right. So, that that much times expectation of 
x tilde y tilde over expectation of y tilde square. Okay, I think I, I think this is correct. Any mistakes? Fine. So I'm taking expectation of x tilde square <coughs> plus expectation of y tilde square times this whole square, right? So that's what this is. So there you'll have one cancellation here, minus two expectation of x tilde y tilde times that constant, right? So I have so I have this guy squared now, right? So this works out to be. I think this works out to be. Uh, what I want, right? Is this okay? So I will have. So so for one for one thing, one of this will cancel this two, right? I mean this is exactly the same as this, isn't it? Except for the two. So I can just get rid of, I can just get rid of that guy, and get rid of the two. So I think you will agree with that, okay? So I think that that's all I have. That's all I want. Right, so this is greater than or equal to zero. Right, which means I have. Bring this to this side. You have expectation of expectation of x tilde y tilde uh, squared is less than or equal to. Expectation of x tilde squared times expectation of y tilde squared. Correct. So this is so, which means the absolute. So if you take square roots, positive square roots on both sides, you get absolute covariance less than or equal to sigma x times sigma y, right? Because this is sigma x squared and sigma y squared. Right, so you would have proven the inequal the Cauchy Schwarz inequality. Now, how would you how do you prove this bit? Okay, so this greater than or equal to zero is for this. Okay, so this is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so now uh, you have so if you have absolute rho x y equal to one, then which the, that means that this is met with equality, correct? Which means that is met with equality eventually, correct? So I have the expectation of a squared this this whole thing squared equal to zero, which means x tilde must be equal to some constant times y tilde, which is what we wanted to prove, correct? In fact, you can identify the constant a as that guy, correct? Fine. Okay. Is that clear? The second part of the theme. So essentially, we are saying that this random variable inside this squared must be zero almost surely. So, which means almost surely y tilde x tilde must be a constant times y tilde. End of story. Which is what we have, which is what we wanted to prove, right? Or maybe I will have it the other way, right? I will have x tilde equal to constant times y tilde, which is same as saying y tilde is some other constant times x tilde. Okay. Are there any questions? So, there is a Cauchy Schwarz inequality in the total space and non space. Is it the derivation of that in your? Well, yeah, so I am getting to that. Okay, so, the question is uh, in you know for uh, uh, so you, you, you know that if you have uh, let us say vectors, let us say vectors in Euclidean space. You, there's a standard definition of inner product, and right inner product x y between two vectors. 
and you know that for two vectors in Euclidean space there is this Cauchy Schwarz inequality which says absolute inner product of x y is less than or equal to square root of norm x times square root of well norm x times norm y right so, yeah norm x times norm y. So, uh, so this has a very similar flavor to it right in particular what happens is that this covariance of x y plays the role of a inner product okay and this in some sense the sigma x and sigma y are playing the role of the norm okay right except these x and y's are not vectors in r and they are random variables correct so the so this covariance satisfies all the properties of a nino product namely so what are the properties that you want of an inner product you want symmetry right inner product x y should be equal to inner product y x right. So, that is clearly true covariance x y and covariance y x are equal right by definition they are equal right and then what do you want you want bilinearity right bilinearity is if you have inner product a x plus b y inner product with z you want to become linear which is also true for covariance right and then finally you want so and then you want so then you can prove Cauchy Schwarz holds right Cauchy Schwarz obviously holds there, there is one little thing that remains you want inner product x with itself is always greater than or equal to 0 correct and equality holds only if x is equal to 0 that is a property of inner product that is one of the defining properties of an inner product correct. So, what is if I claim that covariance of x y is in fact behaving like an inner product I want to establish that covariance of x comma x is greater than or equal to 0 correct. So, what is covariance of x comma x yeah covariance of x comma x is simply the variance of x is not it. So, that is greater than or equal to 0 no problem, but if the variance equal to 0 you have to show that that x is equal to 0 is that true x is equal to so well x is equal to you cannot say that x is equal to 0 you can say that x is equal to constant, but even x is equal to constant you can only say for almost surely right. So, there is a little bit of a there is a little bit of a problem here. So, for one thing you can do is you can just consider 0 mean random variables right just consider the you can think of this x and y's are all 0 mean random variables if you have non 0 mean you just subtract it off right if it is a finite mean as long as it is finite you just subtract it off. So, you work with only 0 mean random variables then you this problem kind of goes away right if you say that covariance of x comma of x is equal to 0 that means x is equal to now 0 almost surely because these are all 0 mean random variables, but again you have to have this problem it is not really 0 random variable it is it could be non 0 in some set of probability measure 0 right. So, ultimately you have to consider the equivalence class of random variables which are uh, which agree on except agree everywhere except perhaps on a 0 measure set right if you are willing to consider that equivalence class as the 0 random variable right if the set of all random variables are equal to 0 almost surely as if you identify that as the 0 random variable the equivalence class of 0 random variables then you have a then everything is fine right so, except for this little adjustment then this is fine right. Uh, then you will in fact have that covariance of x y plays the role of a inner product in the space of 0 mean random variables correct. and these guys are like norms right and then you have uh, Cauchy Schwarz inequality holding and what is uh, so what would you identify rho x y as so what is inner product x y uh, is it the cosine or cosine square the cosine of the angle between the two vectors right right so this is like the uh, so, rho x y will be like the cosine of the angle between these two random variables you can think of this as so x and y are you can think of them as some vectors although they are random variables. So, 
uh, this rho x y has the interpretation of cos theta in, in some loose sense right. So, in this can be more made more precise everything I have said can be made more precise. So, if you consider the class of random variables with 0 mean and if you are willing to identify this almost surely constant random variables as simply 0, then you can prove that these 0 mean random variables uh, with of course, finite all this well defined right. For example, variance should be finite and so on right. Whenever variance is finite this forms a Hilbert space. Have you heard of a Hilbert space? So, a Hilbert space is basically a complete space with a endowed with a inner product. It is an you know I told you it is endowed with an inner product and it is also a complete space because it has I mean the, the values these x these x and y take values in a complete space right they, they are in particular they take values in r in our case right. So, you can prove that these finite second moment random variables with identifying this equivalence class to 0 right form a uh, Hilbert space ok. It is called L 2 L 2 random variables ok. They have finite second moment and in this L 2 sp space which is a Hilbert space this this play this rho x y plays the role of cos theta ok and cos theta equal to 0 means x and y are orthogonal right. So, co uncorrelated random variables are like your orthogonal vectors ok. So, this interpretation is quite useful in uh, in many many areas I mean in particular in estimation theory this plays a this interpretation is very important ok. So, I did not I mean I did not make this very rigorous, but I just spoke it out, but I hope you are roughly with me on this ok. This can be made uh, much more rigorous ok. Uh, are there any questions? So, you can remember so what the take home is that there is this this finite mean random finite second moment random variables these well defined this they lie in the space called L 2 which is a Hilbert space ok and you can define inner product cosine all that is uh, you can do ok ok I will stop here.